It's the next level. Perhaps we all need more time to get to know one another. Maybe. Or maybe we just need some help. Oh! Hiya, kids! Oh, Agnes! Agnes, I was just fluffing this pillow with my face. Oh, I was just on my way to Jazzercise when I heard your new little bundles of joy were on a sleep strike. Oh, who told you that? Uh, my ears. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Auntie Agnes is here and I've got a couple of tricks up my sleeve. Oh, Agnes, you're a lifesaver. No. Very well, but be careful of their belly buttons and remember to support their heads. And when was the last time you washed your hands? Actually, you know what? You would just maybe we better not. Um. Uh. Do you want me to take that again? Uh, I'm sorry. You want me to hold the babies? Should we just take it from the top? Uh -huh. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. I'm Jason. And I'm Paik. And this is going to be a spoiler-filled episode of Season 1, Episode 5 of WandaVision. And, well, you'll get to hear Snowpiercer Season 2, Episode 2, with Kat and Steve at a little later time. But this time, well, we, we felt we wanted the need or had the need to actually have two separate podcasts regarding these two episodes because uh, a lot of people are really into it. So to explain a little bit of what's going on, literally, I'm going to let Steve take it away what he uh, sent us as far as a soundbite. Hey, panelers, this is Steve. I have to uh, eat a little crow. I did say last week I was going to double down on Wanda not being the one who's editing the broadcast. And obviously from this week, we can see that I was wrong. Uh, she knows exactly what she's doing. She's controlling everything. She's not in a catatonic state. Uh, there may be something more going on, but uh, we'll have to learn that down the road. So bye for now. <laughs> and that's what Steve had to offer in the very beginning. So I guess this was his little... Uh talk about what we talked about last week so but he will he has another message that we'll send at the at the very end of the podcast so with that we're going to move on and we're discussing wandavision season one episode five on a very special episode so the synopsis of this episode is wanda addresses vision's worries when he grows suspicious of the neighbor's strange behavior and but he's a a bit there has to be something else involved, in my opinion. Opinions will come later on within notes. So basically, he, he's very suspicious of Wanda, and he actually does confront her. So with that, I'm just going to, we're going to move on to everybody's first impressions. So Jason, why don't we start with you? Who's a popsicle? Okay, yeah, I'm I'm really digging this series, and it's actually this is the first time I've gotten to talk about it on a podcast, so I'm excited because <laughs> it's one of the shows I'm super into right now, and I was looking forward to it, but uh, you know, the idea of it being like sitcom related, it seemed like it could either be really fun or be really weird and not work at all, but I think it's working really well, the mix of genres and styles and everything, and. And I, for one thing, I love old sitcoms. Like I grew up probably like a lot of us watching all these shows back to Mary Tyler Moore. And I mean, uh, the Dick Van Dyke show and Bewitched, I've probably seen them all every episode and family ties. So it's really, really fun to see this, uh, how they're doing it. And this particular episode itself, like last week was probably my least favorite episode just because they didn't do the sitcom stuff. And <laughs> it was more like a typical MCU kind of a thing to explain to the slow people who don't aren't yeah. into this and yeah, already kind of figured it out. Speed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no offense. But uh, so this, this episode, I thought it was a nice melding of the two styles and, mm -hmm. and get, you know, getting a little bit more underneath things, but still family ties was one of my favorites. So I really dug it. Cool. And Pake? Man, um, I, I kind of echo what Jason said a little bit, uh, that 
Yeah, I've been absolutely loving this season. I was just a huge Marvel fan and MCU fan. It is really cool to see them do something different. And then now as it's kind of melding in over, like he said, where you're starting to see, oh, this fits in the MCU timeline amazingly. It actually has huge implications for the films and stuff going forward. Mm -hmm. But it's also like the creative, you know, sitcom kind of thing is really cool. So especially with this episode, the implications, and we'll get to that stuff. It was one of the things yeah. I literally texted you, Mark, and was like, I need on this episode. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I right? haven't podcasted about <laughs> this show either. And so I'm, you know, and then you're like, well, Jason's already doing it with me. So I'm grateful, Jason, you're allowing me to share your spotlight. Yeah, it's fun. Here. No, it's fun. Yeah, I was like, I have to talk about this. Yeah. One. And one thing, I mean, it's a bold thing to do. Like, I, I have friends who watch the first episode and they're like, I don't get this at all and I don't like it. <laughs> and they're not watching anymore <laughs> right. because it's so different, you know, but, um, mm -hmm. I think it, it's a hit though. I think most people are digging it and I, I yeah. really admire them for doing something so offbeat. I think yeah. we have to credit to, to what Ben Beck usually says, give it three episodes and, yeah. and you'll figure mm -hmm. it out. If I know you like it or you don't. And a lot of people by this time, but they struggle through the fourth and they're like, I like it now. And then come fifth episode, uh, okay, now I see where we're going with this. Now, mind you, yeah. there's only nine episodes total. They're saying there might be a hidden tenth. Oh, but, interesting. And with this... Uh, and that's I, it, huh? This is just a mini series, right? No it, second season? It's a se one season as far as I know of. As far as we you know. know from what yeah. I've read. Yeah. But the thing is, it's also the precursor to Doctor Strange and the multiver uh, Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. Sam Raimi. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think I'm thinking that they're basically setting us up and these are my overall thoughts for this particular episode because it got right in our face during one scene that Wanda is going to be that villain in that particular episode or that particular movie. So we're being set up with Wanda and everything that she's going through and then Doctor Strange is going to have to help her in some way because she ripped a hole somewhere. And I think it's based upon what she did. But hmm. those are my thoughts. Don't, I'm not looking else theory. on the internet. It's, it's theories. It's <laughs> not me yeah. being spoiler full. I'm not being paid by <laughs> Disney Marvel. But, you know. Well, I found I, out firsthand this week that Disney and Marvel are very tight lipped and won't allow anybody to say anything. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You but, can talk about that a little bit later. We, we, you and I discussed about that. I was surprised. Yeah. But <laughs> I was trying to bring a little treat to the podcast and I was shut down. That's fine. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget to bring that up. I'm curious now. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, but like, yeah, make it sound a little more uh, dramatic than it was. But yeah, no. <laughs> I really enjoyed the episode. It gave us so much more that really, it really made me sink my teeth into the actual show, even more so. It felt juicy, it felt something that I really wanted to swallow and just get into even more so. Uh, kind of like a good meal. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with that, uh, we're, we're just going to move into our top fives, our highlights of our favorite parts of the, uh, the episode. So with that, Jason, start off with your number five. Well, I'm going to talk about the thing that probably made Paik want to be on the podcast. So <laughs> really, should I let you go first or <laughs> I don't know. I'll start. Why don't we just start? You know, we'll have yeah, a conversation go about it. it. Just go for it, man. We'll, we'll talk I mean, it. Yeah. I'm just going straight for the thing that like I always do that I thought was the most like fascinating mm. to me. And that was seeing Quicksilver at the end. Yeah. Okay. Uh, show up at the door. And her long lost Wanda's long lost brother Pietro, who she says is far away, but as we know from the Marvel movies, died back in uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. And, but this is Evan Peters, who played Quicksilver in the X Men movies. Yes. And the MCU Quicksilver was Aaron Taylor Johnson, who also played Kick Ass. And, uh, and both were actually in Kick Ass, by the way. Oh, uh, Evan Peters was in that? Yes. Yeah, he was he like his like, best friend. friend. Oh shoot! I didn't even remember that. That's awesome. I see. I really dig Evan Peters. Uh, I've watched you know a, several seasons of American Horror Stories, and if you don't know, that's an anthology, so it's a different uh, story each year. But the cast comes back a lot of them, and he's always great in it. Yeah, he and, is. Anyway, um, 
I think, uh, you know, most people know, so I'm just going to really quick, like Disney now owns everything, but Fox used to be separate and they had the X-Men. So that was always separate from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, and that's why there's two versions of Quicksilver, the X-Men version played by Evan Peters and Aaron Taylor Johnson in the MCU. But now Disney has purchased Fox and they have all the rights to X-Men. And so, you know, I think this could potentially be their way of bringing Evan Peters into the Marvel universe and dipping their toe into that whole multiverse concept that we know they're about getting ready to get into, as you yes. mentioned, Mark. But, uh, I think there, that, uh, one reason why, another reason why I think that might be what's happening is because Evan Peters kicked ass in those X-Men movies. Like yes. those Quicksilver scenes were the best thing in those movies. Oh, I love those scenes. So fun. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah. Um, but it could just be a tease or, you know, it could just be a guest starring role that isn't going to mean anything. I doubt yeah, it, but know. you never know. His but, comic uh, delivery was really good though. At the very end. He's great. He can yeah. handle anything. And and just also, if you don't know about the multiverse, I don't know how many people listening are as versed in all this stuff as we are, probably a lot of them. But if you don't know, like in Marvel, there's different alternate realities and mm -hmm. you may have um, characters that are similar, but different or evil versions of characters or whatever. And so I'm glad as a sort of a mainstream comic audience now we're at a point where they've decided we're ready for that in the movies because i always thought it was a super cool concept and you know if they would have introduced that first thing off the bat it probably would have been too soon but the marvel movies are at a point now where it's time to dive in and we've heard the spider-man movie coming up may feature toby Maguire and andrew garfield spy versions and mm -hmm. go into the whole spider-verse concept and all that so yeah. this might be where they're going with it they have to be because with all the information of uh, Alfred Molina reprising yeah. his role as Doc Ock and you got Jamie Foxx coming back in as Electro. Electro. Mm -hmm. And then in the second set of Spider-Man yeah. movies. And then uh, recently Willem Dafoe coming back in as Green Goblin. So I can't it, wait for that. That's no, so, oh, so great. It's going to be great. <laughs> it might be just for like a moment within yeah, the movie. Cameos, yeah. But regardless, yeah. it makes sense. And I think that's really where between Marvel, Disney, slash, uh, Sony, and having the Fox universe at their hands, they're going to just start launching off this to make it work. They're making, uh, of all things, DC look really bad at this point. <laughs> oh, they uh, have been all along. <laughs> well, one last thing I wanted to sort of touch on on this is, okay, so why did this happen? And mm -hmm. there's a theme of death and bringing people back to life in this episode with the dog Correct. dying and the kids being like, can you bring him back? And she's like, we can't reverse death no matter how sad it makes us, unless it's my husband robot, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> um, so maybe that put it in her mind and then she subconsciously like pulled this other version of mm -hmm. her brother from another universe or something. Yeah, that's the running theories I have on that because it here because that I'll go ahead and say that this was my number one, of course, because I'm like, but yeah, it makes sense. I was like, yeah, Jason's gonna jump on it or somebody is, and that's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like it's officially we're getting that crossover of the like, X Men universe, whether it's a big or small thing. But uh, she did not do this, at least consciously, because they're having no, that conversation. She's surprised. Her, her and Vision are sitting there, and that doorbell rings, and she's like, "I didn't do it this time. I know you don't believe me, but I really didn't." And the shock she has on her face when she opens the door and sees him standing there, even though I'm still trying to figure out, like, because it takes him being like, you know, oh, long lost bro can't give his sis a hug or whatever. Like, <laughs> and then it clicks that that's so I don't know. If she wouldn't recognize him as like Aaron Taylor Johnson. No, version. So no, it's, no, there's something off there. And so I'm just like somebody or something else is more involved. And I'm thinking, was it like, you know, I know Mark has mentioned I've listened to the podcast. So, <laughs> you know. Mark has mentioned, you know, Agnes being like Agatha from the Darkness. comics yeah. and and having so she may have a bigger role. And I think that's another kind of point that I'll talk about a little more on her. But it's like her or maybe there's like a Mephisto storyline or something going on here. Yes. But like Jason said, I'm also thinking, yeah, like it could also just be Wanda's own subconscious working on its own against her at this point. Mm -hmm. I because think so she even too. says to Vision, like. I don't even remember how this started and how all this stuff, like it just, it just has happened. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's purposefully unclear right now exactly mm -hmm. what's going on. There's enough for us to definitely speculate educated guesses, but we don't yeah. know the full details of everything. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that was both you. Uh, well, my, my number five would be the kids crew within a matter of moments being able, you know, being babies at five years old, 
to five years old and then they jump to 10 years old mm -hmm. the jumping of the, the the kids growing because it's they're in pain or something the first time was when they were babies and she couldn't even lull them to sleep she was trying to do the magic to get them to sleep and she couldn't and then next thing you know mm -hmm. out of the blue they're five and then there was that whole thing about the dog and then he jumped from what five years old to ten years old because they yeah. were trying to avoid old enough to get a dog yeah, yeah. yeah exactly and she even s says it to them when the dog you know when agnes shows has the dog all covered and she goes please don't get older right away yeah like as if she knew but uh, either they're sentient to themselves and she's aware of it even though she technically created them mm -hmm. or they're just part of a, a plan that she is a slightly aware of subconsciously I think agnes is doing it well or she's um she's trying to direct that because well, I, yeah when, really. when she when uh wanda was trying to quiet the kids and she couldn't mm -hmm. which these are the only beings in this mm -hmm. whole anomaly that she can't control so that to me tells me they're special and then agnes came along and she's like oh let me do my ma little charms or whatever and vision was who's becoming more self-aware and going off script so, so to speak was yeah. like oh maybe we shouldn't and that's where agnes was like oh uh should we take that again like she turned into an actress all of a sudden and yes yeah. my first thought was oh is there a script that she knows about but then i thought no because then agnes says you want me to uh, help them right like she was kind of pushing for that for uh, and then wanda was like okay so i think agnes was actually just trying to get get it so that she could get in there and the next thing you know they're uh aged they're up yeah then the next yeah. time was with the dog where she brought in the doggy uh dog house and mm -hmm. was trying to encourage that yes you should have this dog and then wanda was like well they can't have a dog until they're 10 and that, so it was sort of at her pushing, it. pushing that happened then yeah. uh, when she had the dead dog which she quote unquote found that's when wanda was saying don't age up again like for some reason she thought seeing the dead dog would make them want to age up but they i guess they didn't but it seemed like that was another case to me agnes is always there and doing mm. something so i feel like this whole thing like in, in season one where we heard them say for the children you know that fundraiser all the audience yes. and then here in this episode visions go why how come there's no other children here so which makes you think okay then for the children just means for wanda's kids so i really think that um even though for wanda who is the main power here and controlling all of this so she can have her idyllic life that she's missing out on that agnes is taking advantage of that and her goal has something to do with these kids hmm, that's good really point. good I never thought of Agnes in that situation because in my notes I have that I, I gave the twins a lot more power. And it's really because, yeah. again, in that they're moment, deciding. I love they look like they're the ones deciding. To yeah. Do it. Yeah. Because yeah. it's whenever he says, you know, when you're 10 and then I have, you know, the, this like look and grin they give each other, this like knowing, <laughs> yeah. smile, which I loved. And then they immediately grow up. And so that's why I'm giving it like, oh, so they, they have powers and abilities of their own and they're in control at this point. But you mentioning the fact that, I mean, because I was like, well, then as babies, like maybe like Mark said, it's just because they were uncomfortable and crying. They like they just decided like their subconscious was able to grow them to a place where they weren't worried about that anymore. Mm. But I didn't make that connection or think about the fact that, yeah, Agnes is with them at all those times. Yeah. And so that is really interesting because I know when she tells them don't grow after they find the dog or whatever. And it's like it looks like they're wanting to. And mm -hmm. she is because like you it, you want to run from this feeling. You feel like, oh, yeah. you're older, you're more mature, and you're not going to be sad about a dog dying anymore. Hmm. But yeah. sit in this moment because like grief is is fine. <laughs> you know, like sometimes it's important to be <laughs> able to She's kind of a hypocrite there, but yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, plus with uh with Agnes, they were able to pinpoint a lot of people within the town with their uh identifications. If you look at the and boards. Not her. And not she's her. One she's the only have. one that they don't and, have. You know, I mean, it's clear now that Wanda is, like Steve said at the beginning, she's she's controlling. I, I, I to at least some degree, she's feels like she's the main power here. She's definitely aware of what's happening when, as you see, when she walks outside of the anomaly mm -hmm. and tells them, "Leave me alone. You you have nothing to offer me. I have everything I want." Right? But she tells Vision, 
I don't know how all this started. So what mm -hmm. I, my theory is that yes, she is now aware of it, but, but somebody else got the wheels in motion, Agnes or somebody she's working with maybe, and they, they have a different purpose in mind for all of it. And they're taking advantage of her yeah. grief. Maybe it was her husband, Agnes's husband. Who we never we don't see. We don't see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there could be something Korean. more to that. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll add to this one because you know, yeah. I teased it earlier about the you know <laughs> Disney and Marvel thing. Yeah. So here's what my uh, like kind of little moment of that is when they grow up older into the ten year old versions of themselves. The ten year old version of Billy is played by my dude Julian Hilliard. He played Luke, the young Luke in Haunting of Hill House. Yep. And oh wow, uh, I didn't and, recognize and him. And Rima got to do a panel with him <laughs> in, in, in Chicago. That's awesome. And it turns out that he lives kind of locally to me, and so. I've st I've kept in touch with them, so I kind of like know him and his mom, and I'll, I'll message them random things, and you know, here and there. So we've stayed in touch. So it was really a funny thing whenever it, you know they grew up to ten, and I was like, ah, Julian. I immediately paused the show, <laughs> messaged his mom, and was like, holy crap, WandaVision! Like he's in the MCU. This is <laughs> insane. And I guess they had stayed up to watch the premiere of it whenever it dropped on Disney Plus too, because like she messaged me back immediately. She's like. This is the biggest secret he has ever had to keep in his life. And he's Aww. on cloud nine about all this. <laughs> but I was just congratulating him. I was like, this is really cool. It's a really cool, cool thing for him. But what yeah. I was mentioning, so then I told her, you know, after I messaged you, Mark, and I was like, well, I'm doing this podcast. And, like, maybe I can get some kind of, like, you know, little blurb or, you know, just, like, yeah. comment or, you know, voicemail or something from him giving some experience or whatever. And immediately she was like, we are not allowed to say anything. Mm. Like, yeah. they are... And it was like Disney is keeping them very tight lipped on everything. Like even just they can't talk even about like this episode we've seen because there's some, you know, details that you don't want to be able to like slip up or give away or it's yeah. all crossed. So it was like she was like, yeah, we can't say anything like so I didn't I was able to get really much of anything out of them. But I was like. I'm happy for my dude. That's cool for there him. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. I mean, I'm not surprised at all there. And, and, you know, when they're able to keep everything under wraps and we get surprised, then mm -hmm. that's cool. So yeah. I'm not mad about that. It would have been not cool to all. have a blurb or something, but it's cool. Yeah. I was like, if you guys want to, it was like, I totally get, cause I was, I was like in my message to her, I even said, I was like, <laughs> I don't even know what the like logistics of Marvel studios and stuff have on you guys with that stuff. And she was like, yeah, we, Nothing, nothing. I think it's Disney complete because I think Katie Sackhoff knew a year before she was going to be Bo Katan, and <laughs> she had to come out. And I, I saw an interview with her and Christian Harloff, and she goes, "I had to keep that secret." She goes, "You don't know how many times I wanted to tell you, and they're good friends." And I'm watching it, going, "Okay, the NDAs for Disney is really locked down." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, on to number four. So, uh, Jason, do you add a number four? Yeah, let me see here. I mean, it was w what's going on and how aware of it is is Wanda. And I think that's pretty much everything I just went over. So, yeah, I just think that she's, she's aware and she doesn't know how it started, though. She was telling the truth to Vision about that. And I think Agnes has is part of why it started and she's using this whole situation to her benefit and it has something to do with these kids which maybe she's going to raise up she wanted <laughs> maybe she wanted wanda to create them and then she's going to try to use them or something i don't know yeah uh peg all right uh my next point i just wanted to like throw a little it's just kind of a fun little thing but the title of the episode itself which i don't know if we've mentioned yet or not was i think you did at the top yeah on a very special episode is what <laughs> this is called and I love that because it's a lot of these sitcom tropes that they are really good at using in this mm -hmm. show because older sitcoms used to use the phrase a lot. It was on a very special episode of dot, dot, dot. And it was, you always would preface that airing of that episode then with saying that because that was the fact that that episode would be tackling a sensitive subject of some kind. Correct. And then, you know, there's, you know, certain shows would do that like drug abuse with, you know, the kind of funny you know it's kind of mocked now but like saved by the bell doing the caffeine pills episode oh my god or, <laughs> or like silver spoons doing episodes about like child abuse and child or tom abuse hanks and, and family like ties and he's the drunk yeah. uncle yeah exactly and so they would preface a lot of those with you know on a very special episode because it's going to get into some like sensitive topics and they wanted you to make sure of that and so the nod to that in this episode is the whole episode deals with the theme and concept of death and grief and whether it's, you know, between Wanda and the boys with the dog and being like, you know, you can't just bring back stuff 
from the dead. Again, you even mentioned that kind of hypocrisy, though, of what she did to Vision. Mm-hmm. But then even with Pietro coming back, but then that conversation between her and Vision kind of at the end where she's saying, like, you know, because of your grief over my death, even though he doesn't really know that, but, you know, throwing it back at her that something's wrong, but it's it's clicking in her head that this is what's going on now. It's because of what her actions do to her grief. Now there are other innocent people who are suffering and in pain, and Vision's not happy about that. And it's it's starting to rip this facade and everything's starting to crumble under her and it's destroying the relationship that her and vision have that she did all this to like revive and protect hmm. yeah and it's like on the very special episodes that's when the sitcom w- turned into a drama yeah yeah and that is happening more and more with with wanda's mm-hmm. sitcom that she's trying to keep together but it's yeah getting serious <laughs> yeah it's too serious mm-hmm. for her yeah uh my well my number four would be well darcy mentions the hex and for those who are comic nerds like the rest of us, that that is something that they used to call what Scarlet Witch used to do in the comic with her power. She would hex people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a spell, but here exactly, it's like a yeah. hexagon. So it's, it's a, a nice hexagon. Play on words. It's a lot of hexagon <laughs> symbols. We also see a lot of imagery within the episode itself regarding you'll see M for Maximoff and a W, the M upside down on the chairs behind you. A lot of, like, even within every episode, Ben and I were talking about this one night after, like, a game night or something. And he goes, no, it's all over. And I'm like, yeah, as as you watch every episode, it's always in your face. And I look at it as, like, House of M. And that was one of the comic runs that they did where Wanda, and I brought it up to Steve a while ago, where Wanda just goes no more mutants i think at a certain point there we're gonna get there where she goes Mm. mutants Mm. because these kids have powers and she's gonna want everybody else to have something similar to her own children at a certain point and then she just creates this world or she rips open the fox universe and we get alternate versions of what we saw maybe a different wolverine maybe a we already got you know quicksilver (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was thinking, okay, because they got Evan Peters Quicksilver, would that be a way for her to get, like, uh, uh, Jennifer, what's her name, Mystique? Oh, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence Mystique and Hugh, you know. Hugh Jackman all, as Hugh Jackman Wolverine. Movie. But I'm like, mm, I don't think so, because no. the X-Men movies weren't doing so well towards the end there. Hugh Jackman said he's done playing Wolverine with Correct. Logan. Jennifer Lawrence is too big of a star. Um so, and you got the new Mutants movie that just came out, and you didn't have... Didn't do that well, either. Didn't do that well, but regardless, <laughs> they could still get well Ileana Rasputin or whoever yeah, else that'd be that cool. needs a job. Yeah, that'd be cool. Joy. But anyway, yeah. I, I feel like maybe they would take Evan Peters, but I think maybe you're right that she would just create all new versions or something, or mm-hmm. I, I don't think they're going to take the Fox versions of the no. rest of the X-Men, I think if Marvel does X-Men, which duh, obviously they will, right? Hopefully that they will start it <laughs> over somehow or have different actors playing all the roles and stuff. Be fresh about it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that house of M, I mean, the main thing on that was that the house of M series, Brian Bendis was that Scarlet, Witch was so devastated by a bunch of different things that happened in her life. Right. Trauma. Yes. and thing. I think she had created two kids and then they, she lost them. And so anyway, she just went, crazy and ended up creating this whole world where mutants were actually adored because she is a mutant in the Marvel universe, or at least she was back then. God, it gets so convoluted. Um, (laughs) so it's kind of like this, like, Oh, she maybe created this whole alternate reality. But I, but I think, um, one of the, um, complaints or criticisms about that was it kind of fed into this whole hysterical woman stereotype and that's why i kind of think maybe in this version there is someone else manipulating her so that it won't be all her fault and i don't know if she'll be the bad guy in doctor strange maybe you're right but i feel like by the end of this series maybe she'll be vindicated and she'll be a hero we'll see and pake um, let's see. A lot of mine are kind of just crossing over into other things we're talking about. But, but <laughs> that that's wasn't totally a number, fine. by the way. 
Oh, yeah. oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should I do my number three? Yeah, sure. Yeah, because it's pretty different. It's ties to sitcoms. <laughs> and what I love about these, or, or it, it makes you feel weird, though, is you have a set that looks like obviously they were going for Brady Bunch a couple episodes ago, right? Yes. But with the stairwell that's so iconic but it was the, in your eyes <laughs> yeah but the rooms are in the wrong places and like here it, it, this is family ties but the kitchen's on the other side and yes. i'm like that's wrong <laughs> it makes me feel wrong but uh they um i love how elizabeth olsen is playing it like she's very much channeling mary tyler moore in the first episode and then samantha of bewitched just mm -hmm. the same mannerisms and everything and here yeah. i guess meredith baxter bernie i didn't I don't know if she, if she was specifically trying to channel her, but she definitely felt like an eighties sitcom mom. Mm -hmm. Um, but the opening credits, like that's very much a combination of family ties where they painted the characters yeah. yes, and growing pains where they showed the younger versions mm -hmm. and little baby vision was super cute. <laughs> baby fish <laughs> and also there was one shot that was kind of full house where the cameras yeah. the yep. family's the running yeah which yeah. is and kind of interesting in front of the gazebo too yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's the same gazebo that was in the first episode so you can tell that it's the same place even though the style mm -hmm. changes but um that's cool because of course elizabeth olsen is the sister of the olsen yeah. twins who played little baby michelle on that show and they're twins so the whole twin concept plays in um the opening song sounded a lot like well family ties and growing pains they both had similar yeah yeah sounding songs and the, it's saying we're making it up as we go along which is kind of what literally what's going on she's doing <laughs> yeah and then yeah you mentioned the special guest star trope with where Tom Hanks was Uncle Uncle Ned alcoholic. That's Pietro Maximoff in this one. Mm -hmm. um, and Siri just activated for some reason. And then Agnes keeps mentioning her husband, Ralph. That's another trope where there's a character that keeps getting mentioned, but you never see like Vera on Cheers, mm -hmm. you know, Norm's mm -hmm. wife. And the kids aging up even. Like, I think that's a that's an intentional play on family ties where you had in season three, I think they had another baby. So uh alex got a little brother andrew who was a baby for two seasons and then all of a sudden in season five he was three years old just whoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i think that was a play on that so i love all these little nods to sitcoms very yeah. cool yeah Fun. it makes me think though would they ever do something like with mr wilson and have deadpool on the other side of the fence and then have him say there's our funny neighbor wilson that would be awesome uh, F F F F F F F my neighbors <laughs> i'm assuming the way it's going we'll get into 90s next week and <laughs> what would 90s be week? uh tool time or i mean yeah it's, yeah it'd be <laughs> funny to kind of do yeah uh yeah. home improvement but like i mean Cause maybe I'm just trying to think what's like the biggest like, think, like, 90s more full house kind of stuff. Cause it kind of bridged yeah. that gap. Kind of yeah. In the middle. House, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I stopped, I kind of stopped watching a lot of sitcoms, sitcoms around the mid yeah. late nineties. Mid nineties. Yeah. You after that, kind of I don't know anymore. Yeah. <laughs> kind of get into like boy meets world. If they did the of office. Or... That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting. But yeah, uh, is it my turn on number three? Yeah. I guess Seinfeld, huh? Duh. That was my Se ultimate, yeah, ultimate favorite. And Friends. Friends. Anyways, sorry, yeah, uh, Oh, no, that's good. Uh, yeah, mine other is just kind of, we've talked about it again. Like I said, things are kind of crossing over. But like the, the control that we do know that Wanda has. And, you know, it, it starts when we find out that like she broke into S.W.O.R.D. and actually pulled the body of Vision out and brought mm -hmm. him back to like this area. And they even mentioned, I was like, but she doesn't have a mind stone or anything. So how, how did she bring it back to life? And that's where we're starting to see, like, there is more to her power of creation. Almost. It's like, you know, she manipulates reality is what her power mm -hmm. is, is really given and called. And so where she's been able to create this reality of even life, not only giving vision life without a mind stone, but they mentioned, you know, when, when Wu is looking for, okay, so do we have a tab on who these minors are who are playing her children? And Monica's like, no, those are legitimately yeah, Wanda's real. kids. She has given life to these children, even if it's in this weird TV sitcom world where rules don't make sense and everything is just kind of wacky and out of, out of reality. 
mm. within that reality. Like, no, she is creating life and she's creating things. These children are hers. A hundred percent. And, yeah, and you mentioned that, the Mind Stone. It's interesting because Wanda got her powers from the Mind Stone in the first place. Not, so. not the Mind Stone. It was the other one, the Tesseract? or was No, it? it wasn't. It was the Mind Stone in the Scepter. I, wasn't it? That, um, no, it that was Loki the cube. Had. It was the cube. Uh, what, what I'd Loki have to was, go back. I don't remember 100%. What, what Loki I think was looking for the was the Tesseract. I didn't write it down. But. but yeah, she was enhanced because of a particular... Uh, the stones that they were that uh, Thanos was getting. So with that, and her trying to break the Mind Stone herself and destroy it, probably absorbed some of uh, the the power within it. I think where she Jason's was able to manipulate. Some research, he'll get us there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he will. But yeah, yeah I uh, like that. Uh, yeah, I kind of thought the same thing. So yeah, and then she has that moment where she breaks out of the hex. And confronts the soldiers and confronts yes. the general and everybody. And you notice that her Sokovian accent is back yes. in that moment. To where, like, like yeah. Jason said, she's channeling these other sitcom mothers and, and characters. But, you know, with the accent and the way she does it. But as soon as she walks out of the hex and she's back in, like, our quote-unquote real world, the, the Sokovian accent is back. Her mannerisms like that are back. She's very stone-faced and, like, fed up with it. And then, but you see with her conversation there is at this point, she's fully aware of what she's doing, how oh, much full control she has. Like we've talked about, like there could be, there's another kind of puppet master pulling the strings above her. Correct. It's a very good possibility, but at least the things that she does have control over, she's aware that she has control over them and she's okay with it because she's trying to keep her world together. And it's starting to crumble with vision yelling at her three end or she's starting to see these little things, but she's, still you know struggling to hold on as much as she can and one thing we didn't mention is that we saw in this episode people are suffering you know yeah um the head of sword said that monica rambo told him that it was excruciating and invasive and then we see that whole scene with norm at the office where he's yeah. just like get her out of my head and yeah. i thought it's her agnes but no i think the way that episode went and even uh, vision said later you can't control me like you're controlling everyone else that it's wanda doing it and, and she i don't gave know him that if she too. knows that it hurts them or not yeah Man. but she this gave him a says, look. The scepter, occasionally referred to as Loki scepter, was a staff weapon that served as the original containment vessel for the Mind Stone, one of the six Infinity Stones. Okay. Uh, and then it says, um, the scepter was confiscated by Hydra, whose scientists use it to give extraordinary powers to the twins Wanda and Pietro Maximoff. So I know the Hydra had the um, Tesseract, mm -hmm. but um, I, yeah, I'm confused about that. I feel like someone came in and changed reality and one of us didn't get <laughs> swept into the new reality i don't know exactly <laughs> right <laughs> well uh i guess it leads to my third point which would be well it had to do with uh monica and when they finally get her to come to and how her clothes that they've you know they take off of her from that dimension or wanda's world are off like kevlar like everything got changed, even Monica got changed because if you don't re recall, they they do analysis on her, they do a CAT scan, everything comes up all crazy. And as we all know, within the the comics, Monica Rambeau becomes the new Captain Marvel, and with uh, she's the first female Captain Marvel, I think, in the comics. Because uh, you got uh, Miss Marvel name? was Carol Danvers. Yeah, Carol yeah. is Miss Marvel, and Monica Rambeau was Captain Marvel. Correct. And then she became another hero, Photon or so something. And I'm then... thinking something happened within her to excel her so that she has some sort of abilities, but we don't see them yet. Part of the abilities in the comic was like an EMP or something where she could, it's like electrical and it'll just dis discharge something to disoriented certain certain things so this like uh, overall analysis of her went bad and then the funny yeah, thing is get reads or scans on her yeah, yeah exactly I, mean, I think she's maybe she's been giving power given powers right is that what you're Correct. saying yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then jimmy mentions that captain marvel could have taken down thanos and then monica get, gets that look of like Ugh. was it you know something that uh she had against carol because her mother got sick monica's mother got sick and yeah, then she was friends with Carol. 
And then, uh, you know, it's of all things. And then Jimmy tells her, he's like, yeah, well, Wanda could have just taken down Thanos too. Yeah. And that's one true. of my biggest questions from this episode is I, that I'm really curious about. Yeah. Cause I do love that they mentioned, yeah, Wanda or Carol could have taken out Thanos if it was a one-on-one -on -one battle, which is fun. Yeah. But, but yeah, that look on Monica's face when they mentioned Captain Marvel and she's like, we're not talking about her. And I wonder, because the last time we saw Monica Rambeau, she was a little girl, mm -hmm. and she was helping Carol pick out the colors for her for her suit, for, you know, Correct. the Captain Marvel suit. And, and they Captain seemed Marvel, really yeah. close. It was like a cl close family friend. And that's the last time we've seen them. So now we've jumped to, you know, current day or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the mention of Carol Danvers makes Monica roll her eyes and be like, "We don't, I don't want to talk about her. And so there's a gap that we're missing. Is like there was a fallout or something happened between Carol and Monica. Mm -hmm. And maybe... I mean, we don't know, but it might have something to do with her mom being dead and yeah, yeah and her having cancer. Her mother had cancer and they Carol didn't help or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, or maybe Carol was the cause based on radiation. Who knows? Right. Yeah. Right. Makes it more dramatic. I'm sure we will we get can't that just be friends. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, eventually. They're working on Captain Marvel too, and there's all kinds of stuff. So. She'll probably be in it. We'll yeah. get there. Yeah. She's really cute, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's neither here nor there, but. <laughs> All right, so uh, Jason, you had uh, anything on number two or no? Num number two, comic connections. We mentioned House of M. Um, have you guys talked about the the Visions comic series, Tom King? Not Vision all? and the Scarlet Witch. No. There's there's a series from oh man, it must have been like seven or eight years ago now called The Visions. Tom mm -hmm. King, it's uh, the Vision and his synthesoid family, family okay. trying to exist yeah. in suburbia peacefully. Wife Virginia, son Vin, daughter Viv, dog Sparky, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, it gets it's really gets dark. I mean, it's you can tell they're drawing from it because he dresses up in his suit and his briefcase and he goes off to work and stuff, but it turns really dark with murder and death and wow just it's very good though it's one of my favorite comic series of the last you know probably ever it's i, I highly recommend checking it out i think it's just 12 issues but they're as much as they're drawing from house of m they're really drawing from that too yeah um, we talked about the hex thing and then the last thing i have is just sword which um was actually created by joss whedon Mm -hmm. for the astonishing x-men series so it was a comic that he wrote it was a great series too um but there it stood for sentient world observation and response department and it was all about focusing on possible alien threats and i think their base was even on a satellite orbiting the earth or something but here it's instead of um sentient world it's sentient weapon observation response division i don't know if that means it's got a different I mean, that you know, describes, describes vision to a weapon. Describes vision to a <laughs> yeah, but even yeah, Scarlet Witch weapon. Stuff, That's I mean, right. Yeah, like people You're who right. have abilities that could like destroy. I mean, it could be a mutant. All it kinds could of be things, yeah. a uh, sentient robot. <laughs> you know, and I, I don't know if I this came out somewhere and I missed it, but I but I read that Sword in the MCU was founded by Maria Rambo, Monica's mother. Yes, did it we was. know that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's all I got for comic stuff. Pig? All right. My number two, I think we talked about most of it, um, was, yeah, Agnes and what her role might be in this. And so I'm trying to see if there's any other notes that I had that we haven't really talked to. Uh, she's not really working within the confines of the others. Like we, you know, mentioned that, and it really is that, like, and I love how these weird moments happen earlier and earlier in each episode. Because, like, in the first episode, it was, like, when the, the boss is choking at the table. And mm -hmm. it was, like, oh, there's something weird going on. And now it's just, like, these little glitches and stuff are happening earlier and earlier. And it always drops my jaw and just, like, catches me off guard and makes me feel uneasy. <laughs> I love how, the, yeah, they changed the um, cinematography style. That yeah, really and, like, the helps. music gets yeah, weird. Yeah. And, yeah, it's all. But, yeah, where she takes, like, should we take that from the top again? Or should we? And she, like, I call it her breaking character. And then that sets Vision off a little bit to where he's, like, it kind of opens up something in him where he's like, this is, this is not right. Like, and he's asking Wanda, like, wasn't that a weird question for her to ask that this doesn't fit into, that's not a normal conversation thing. She's what, what is she trying to say? What is she doing? And then I love how Agnes is purposely like sp spraying, you know, spraying lavender on the babies or getting the alcohol or doing these weird, like, yeah, moves weird and, dances. Dances. and yeah. she's purposely like 
you know, uh, trying to distract, distract. Vision, talking to Wanda <laughs> about the weird thing that she said. But Wanda also herself has been like, oh, it's nothing. She's just, she's a little kooky, but she's here to help. And we haven't slept. So let her take care of the baby. She's a good person. And so you're trying to say like, who's really like, how much does Wanda know about what Agnes is? Mm-hmm. Mm. I think or, she doesn't you know, know, but she do, she gets nervous when Vision starts to question the yeah. fabric of the reality. And that's how, if my theory is right, Agnes can manipulate her because she mm-hmm. knows that Wanda just wants to. She like it's, how- it, it's apropos because the sitcoms, as much as I love them, they're why TV is called the opiate of the masses, you know? Yeah. It's to distract you from the horrors of everyday real life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I could see Agnes wanting to manipulate the fact that that Wanda is so desperate to cling on to this exactly. facade. This, yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> it's an escapism is what yeah. it is for yeah. her. I think escapism, after vision's yeah. death originally at Endgame, and then nine days later, she grabs the body and then she recreates this world with him being a living, walking around cyborg corpse and creating this world just so, because I, I brought it up in earlier podcasts about how, I think she created this world initially so that way it was her visions of happiness. And I brought it up to Steve and I said, well, in Europe and all European places, they have American shows or TV shows. We've already gotten the, what, the 50s, the 60s, now the 70s. Now we're into the 80s at this point. So she probably grew up with all reruns of these. And these were in her idealistic mind of what a true American family would be that's where she her go-to was as being happy so now it's kind of being manipulated and fumbled with and then you know with vision's awareness and him being if you think about it he's just starting to become a little bit more sentient within the actual episodes absolutely so but yeah yeah he's saying he's breaking out of the spell and then he's it's freaking him out because he's like i don't he's remember too many my questions. life before this. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that scene was heavy like yeah. it was where she you know he said you can't control me like all the others and she's like well can't i and then just rolls oh, credits that was, which that was is amazing. like so <laughs> like so meta also this yeah. is like you know oh we'll just roll the credits and we'll ignore like, <laughs> yeah that was a but good then distraction he sits there point and he's arguing and <laughs> no, yelling at her no. through the music and credits like no 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 we're gonna so talk about cool. this. this i love yeah. self ref- uh, meta self-referential yeah. <laughs> stuff like that and the credits i read were the actual people who worked on the episodes that that's was awesome cool. yeah. <laughs> uh that was who went last pig? I think that was my number two is where that came from. Yeah. Okay. Well, so it my, should be on your number one or number two. two I didn't yours. get a number yeah. two, but uh, as far as my number two, that would be, uh, well, think about it with Darcy's influence on everything in the outside world coming in. Uh, the email that vision gets on the computer when they say, Oh, this is state of the art. You're just like a computer vision. <clears throat> and then they see the email from shield or sword come up from Darcy and oh, was it Ned or somebody were, were him Norm. Were, yeah. Norm. Yeah. They were discussing it and vision starts to get a grasp of what the outside world is doing. Yeah. Cause Darcy, the, the email that they got, which is a real email from the sword team outside is saying, yeah, there's like a radioactive element to this hex and we don't know if it's affecting the people inside Westview or not. How now? My, yeah. I was wondering about that. Why did, that come through was that darcy trying to communicate or was it some kind of an accident or what what's your guess it could have been why? just an anomaly or something that got yeah. through through transmission through yeah <laughs> well think about it i mentioned it before with monica with electrical uh, uh like with monica rambo in the comics as far as being captain marvel with those powers and she slipped through that dimensional barrier maybe something slipped through as far as kind of like a communication I guess Maybe it depends that. on the technology because as yes. the sitcoms are getting older or, you know, more current then the technology, still some of that is around. So depending on what computer systems and stuff they're using, yeah. then that can get through because that's why they send that eighties drone in is because they're like, it can't be affected or it changed because yeah. it fits the timeline right now. I just uh, didn't know yeah. if that was an intentional thing on Darcy's part, trying to I impact the world or if maybe it was Darcy really something. wanted that Tandy computer and she wanted to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Commodore. Come on. I, I love seeing that, that startup Commodore screen. Cause it's <laughs> very familiar to me. <laughs> Commodore 64 was a badass. <laughs> All right. All right. We're on to our number one. So Jason, what do you got? 
I just had a few bits and pieces of theories and questions. Um, we've probably talked a lot about it. Vision breaking free from the illusion, mm. which could be foreshadowing that he will actually become self-aware and come back to life after this. What do you guys think? I kind of hope so, but Mark, right. what we, what you were saying before we started recording was really interesting about the white vision. Oh yes. In the comic books, there was a, uh, it was early on Avengers where he kind of wanted to break away. He didn't, he didn't want to have any memory of anything. He basically, got rid of any coloring of himself so he was he was kind of a white vision just just like a ghost almost white or a ghost and he didn't want to have any memory or anything he didn't even want to remember the children and anything before he just wanted to be as like a regular robot and uh it, it seems like the show is taking off if that's where he started from because she brought him back and he has no previous memory at all and now He's starting over, literally. All so he, he may come back changed after this. Yes. Like, he'll yeah. be back, but he'll be changed, possibly. I um, don't think he's going to be able to hold Thor's hammer, but, you know, he'll... <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple more questions. Do you think they aired all these sitcoms in Sokovia? Because wouldn't they have had to if she knows them well enough to yes. create this yeah. world? Yeah. I guess That's that what happens, Mark was saying huh? earlier is, like... That's why I think that's the theme of the hex that she's built is she grew up on these like old American yeah. rerun sitcoms. And so this is what she pictures is like, this is the happy family life that I need to, to help myself. I guess they had Nick at night over there or something. Um, <laughs> and then one big plot hole, wouldn't they totally be getting the other Avengers involved by now? Mm. Like with this whole, whole town being controlled by one of the Avengers. <laughs> I was thinking, like who who else would would Wanda have been close to that could help out other than Vision, obviously. Is I mean where where did her and Clint Barton leave off? I mean, I'm just saying if one of a team of heroes is terrorizing a town, the other team members <laughs> yeah. might be come like, called in to right? sort of consult or something. <laughs> but you know, it's yeah. a Wanda Vision show, so I can understand it. Yeah. Same thing in comics, like that happens all the time. But it just occurred to me, especially as some of those outside scenes mm. that maybe some of the other Avengers might show up if, if And this we was... still they still might. They still maybe there's a lot of theory that that Doctor Strange could be like a big cameo at the end of the season or something. Yes. That'd be awesome. Yeah, or they could have an AI of Tony just come in saying, Hey Wanda, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I had theories and thoughts of no, that. No, he's but dead. He, yeah, spoilers. He, he's still yeah, <laughs> they could still have an AI of him, like a hologram. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> he's done it for yeah. Peter. He's done it for his kid at the very end before uh the wake but the thing is also it's like uh or maybe steve rogers could come in as an old man <laughs> or just to confuse everyone get ben affleck batman oh yeah that's him <laughs> <laughs> i'm batman wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they they could bring in a lot but i think with the budgetary constraints and obviously the the whole scene of her stealing the body that was originally supposed to be an end credit scene for endgame but they cut it out oh so they they used it for the show so obviously so they put a lot of thought into this they put a lot of thought into for it for a while so that yeah. way they could promote it and even you know Elizabeth Olsen actually stated even Bettany said that that's the most acting that they've actually done in all the movies of by course, doing this yeah. show yeah there's so much dialogue so many mm -hmm. character change everything so they, they got tested with this one big time <laughs> and seeing what we saw and we'll talk about it later when we talk about the trailers that we've seen after a super bowl you know there there's a lot more cool stuff that's going to be coming out soon i did um, not realize falcon and winter soldier was this soon oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> when is it My like Coming March, up here yeah. quick, right? Yeah, yeah, right yeah. after WandaVision, they pushed it a little bit more. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. All right, so where are we with your number ones? Yeah, he just did his number one. So mine, we've already talked about completely with with Evan Peters, but I'll throw in another note. Then, if we want to talk about maybe not appearances, guest appearances by somebody, but at least maybe a reference. Okay. And so I'll make that my number one. Just a quick little. Uh, when Monica and Darcy are talking and she's saying, you know, I need this whole like system or whatever, like give me like this whole, like basically like super high tech lab on wheels where I can roll in there and see what I can get done. But it's kind of a little throwaway thing, but she mentions that she knows an aerospace engineer 
that would <laughs> very well be able to help out. And immediately you're like, well, that's got to be Dr. Reed Richards, right? Yes. Mr. Fantastic himself. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I read, but he's, he's a super scientist, not just an aerospace engineer, isn't he? Or I guess they flew out into space and got yes. bombarded with cosmic rays. But man, in the comics, I just think of him as. Uh, super he can genius. do anything, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But maybe, yeah, that would be cool. At least, you know, I, I'm not gonna say like that. 100 percent has to be for sure. But like, mm -hmm. that's exactly where my mind goes. Is because I know that they are trying to bring the Fantastic Four into the MCU as soon as they can. Uh, didn't they announce a movie? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think yeah, so. there is a movie that's in the works. So it's like pre-production. So cool. Yeah. And, you know, and they, anybody they've like been who's able to not... cast Reed Richards under the table where yeah. nobody's known exactly who it is. <laughs> that would be an incredible cameo to throw in at the end. Too, I like, know. Oh, by the way, here's our Reed Richards. <laughs> and Marvel, like anybody who's hears that there's a Fantastic Four movie and go, why, why do we care about that? Fantastic Four <laughs> movies suck because they all have. It, it's yeah. like, no, Marvel <laughs> will do it right like they've they done will. with all these. And Fantastic Four can be really great. And they'll do the right thing and cast an old guy like me to play Reed Richards versus these young <laughs> Reed Richards. It doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. Although I still love the whole fan casting of John Krasinski. Oh, I same really, here. really love it. Yeah, he could pull it I'm off. I'm an Emily yeah. Blunt. Perfect. But it would be funny, though, if they do our whole like Fox universe crossover within WandaVision and they bring Chris Evans as the Human Torch again. Hey, this is our friend Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good Human Torch. Yeah, he was funny. So, uh, with my number one, I, I, I'm going to skip that because I think we have went over a lot of mixed of what I did for my number one when you guys were talking. So, <laughs> and especially with my notes too. So, if you guys have any notes, shoot them out, whatever you have in I got mind. a couple uh, the director of all nine of these is Matt Shackman, who went to college at Yale with my wife, Jenny, and he used to write and direct plays and she would work on the sets and costumes of his plays. And, uh, he was also a child actor. He had a role on this growing pain spinoff, just the 10 of us. And he also played bit parts in facts of life, uh, different strokes, night court, Good Morning Miss Bliss, which was the precursor to Saved by the Bell and, and yeah. Webster. So he really knows these sitcoms, you know, because he's <laughs> been on a bunch of them. And he's also directed episodes of Mad Men, Six Feet Under, The Boys, Fargo, and Game of Thrones. Uh, so Jenny's been watching that going, oh, cool, he's getting some good jobs there. But um, she's like so proud of him now that he's got this big Marvel universe, you know, and <laughs> in charge of the whole show. Like, she, oh, he's finally made it. <laughs> So I thought that was kind of cool. She's she's into it just because of that. She doesn't usually care about the Marvel stuff that much. That's cool, though. <laughs> and then the last note is just the whole Lagos paper towels commercial. Yeah. <laughs> which is Lagos is where the Avengin Avengers had it, their mission in Age of Ultron, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. Wanda accidentally killed a bunch of people. She, like, exploded part of a building and... So I think this red spill, uh, they actually showed a, a quick scene of that when the director of sword was trying to paint her as a bad guy and look what yeah. can happen. And so this whole red spill with the paper towel had to clean up. And then the uh, slogan Lagos for when you make a mess, you didn't mean to oh, clearly God. refers to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or they do actually mention what uh, the, the head of sword was talking to Jimmy and saying, because there's no other call names for these people. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, just like that's some silly hilarious. Nicknames. No. Silly nicknames. No. Which makes you realize they've never called her Scarlet Witch in any of the No, they haven't. No. Yeah. Nope. Not yet. <laughs> I, I feel like maybe she'll get her name in this series. Maybe. That'd be maybe. cool. That's all I got. Okay. Uh, let's see what other notes I have. Um, you mentioned it a little bit about when the, the twins are still babies and she can't make them go to sleep. And the exact line she says is, why won't you do what I want? Which kind of says, like, she's making other people do that. But then I was like, well, they're a new creation. They're not under your spell. They are their mm -hmm. own. They're sentient. Yeah. Their own sentient beings that are become after the fact that you've put this hex on everybody, which is really interesting. This whole scenario reminds me a little bit of the Twilight Zone movie, which was, I think, four different vignettes. But one of them was this little kid who had ultimate power. Do you guys remember? And so they were just feeding him donuts and ice cream and because they knew that if they messed up, he would 
just blink them out of existence or something. Mm, yeah. And they're all scared <laughs> to death of him. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're talking about the Twilight Zone episode, right? Or the yeah, movie. The movie yeah. yeah. The movie. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That, that actually, I brought that up to Steve and he just thought I was crazy when I was thinking about that too. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, we touched on all the rest of my notes. I had a bunch of little extra things, but we've talked about all of them. So yeah, that's all. Well, we can move into, uh, to quotes and I'll, I'll just throw out my first one. As soon as like Pietro walks in, he goes, Who's the popsicle? And he's just referring to vision. So is that referring to a vision because he's literally a walking dead cyborg cold, cold. corpse? <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. just because he looks like that. a drip. <laughs> yeah. I think what it was in the story is it's just because he's got this weird pink purple color and he looks like a popsicle. But taking it from the fact of like, oh yeah, he is dead, like this kind of corpse kind of thing, like it could be a nod to that. I don't think that's what he meant quicksilver yeah. meant but but i think it is it could be a nod to both ways well mm-hmm. they already made the references in previous episode like with uh toaster oven because that's what they used to refer to vision as mm-hmm. in the avengers in the comic yeah yeah in the comic saying he's a toaster <laughs> oven but just like Battlestar galactica the toasters. yeah exactly <laughs> toasters <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I mean, I, I said I like the sitcom format, but I have to say I, I don't laugh as much. It's not they're not as funny as the old sitcoms, but I do laugh a couple of times. And mm-hmm. this time when Wanda ha- it picks up the dog and she's like, now, boys, taking care of a living thing is a big responsibility. Dog needs food, exercise, training, belly rubs and cuddles and kisses between the little ears. Yeah, <laughs> that, that made me laugh. Uh I think I got two more. I just like that Norm refers to Vision as the office funny guy. <laughs> 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 and and then the whole, this isn't funny, but yeah, you already mentioned it, but when Vision says, you can't control me the way you do them, and she goes, can't I? And then the credits are all, that was a great mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like, is yeah. it over? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fake out. Yeah. Fake? Do you have any? Or uh, no? Yeah, I have. I don't know. Do you want me to go like back and forth or you want me to just kind of cover... The you could cover them. I already had the one that was it. Cool. Because, yeah, uh, again, I like just kind of the little, like, funny one. So the first one, in like, yeah, there's it's meant to be kind of cheesy with a laugh track. But some of them I'm still like, yeah, it is kind of uh, cute. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it's absolutely. when Agnes walks in and Vision, like, changes his face immediately hiding behind the pillow. And he's like, Agnes, I was... I was just fluffing this pillow with my, with my face. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like something other, John Ritter would have yeah. said in yeah. Three's Company. <laughs> yeah. The other one that I really liked uh, is kind of a two-parter, but when, when the kids are standing there, like, you know, washing the dog that they had found, and like, we wanted to keep him, and Wanda walks in and goes, you two never stay put unless you're innocently forming a human wall in front of the kitchen <laughs> sink. And then once she picks up the dog, she goes, waiter, what's this canine doing in my kitchen sink? And I think this one was because there was no laugh track that followed it. I think it went under the radar. Most people probably didn't catch it. But she goes, what's this canine doing in my sink? And little five-year-old Tommy quickly responds, the doggy paddle, which (laughs) (laughs) was so funny. (laughs) That's cool. Yeah. And then the other one that, yeah, Jason already mentioned was the Lagos paper towels. For when you make a mess, you didn't mean to. <laughs> well, I have yeah. one last one. I'll say it. So, so tell me, if I were to send an email, where would I put the stamp? And that was Norm <laughs> after Vision puts him in, you know, back under Wanda's spell, just to, with yeah. the whole computer scene. So it's like goofy and silly, but also really ominous because it's like how quickly he just changes back. Yeah, to like, exactly. Goofy sitcom one-liner. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's suffering underneath. Mm. And it seemed like he was um, maybe not fully aware. He was confused. What day is it? I need to call my sister. Yes. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, where's my phone, which he's obviously looking for a cell phone, but um, he said it was excruciating. So you, you feel like maybe there's some awareness and they're just sort of like looking out from inside as a puppet or something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can't control their own bodies, but they're still in there and, they don't know what horrifying. the hell's going on. So I love yeah. the, the sitcom and then this whole horror aspect to it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we can move on. And we should really listen to what Steve has to say about <laughs> the episode. Hello, Mark and special guest. This is Steve, and this is for WandaVision, uh, episode five. Uh, um, this on a very 
uh, special episode. Yeah, I don't know why I can't talk. I just finished it, and wow, so good. I'm just going to say three quick things since I'm not on this podcast, uh, but uh, um, I love the opening credits. It, it looked like it's a mash of kind of growing pains and uh, family ties with that painting of the picture and the, the kit showing the ages of people through the from baby to uh, to where they are now. Um, that's a very growing pains opening. And, um, then the house, I'm not sure the house looked like family ties or it almost seems like it's a mishmash of, uh, those, the typical eighties sitcom house. So that was, uh, that was great. And then, um, I- I'm sure you're going to talk about it cause I have no clue what the Lagos is. I hope you guys might be able to explain the whole thing. The Lagos we've had Strucker, we've had, um, the first one and now, uh, now we have uh, Lagos. So, okay, um, just a quick one, but uh, uh, can't wait to hear uh, to hear you all talk about it. Talk to you later. Awesome. Well, thanks. I don't Steve. remember the exact circumstances behind Lagos, but I think the point was that there was some shit going down, and she accidentally <laughs> killed some people. Yeah. yeah. Well, inadvertently killed people. I should say. <laughs> yeah. Hence the word accident. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, uh, with that, we're, we'll move on to some news, and we'll we'll talk about what we saw earlier. We mentioned one, so we got Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We got the trailer for that after the Super Bowl. That was pretty cool, and I thought kind of reminded me of Captain America Winter Soldier, the way that Bucky and Falcon are working together. It, maybe it's like Tango and Cash with yeah there's a lot of bickering which yeah. just seems like it could be fun yeah they're, 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 they're friends but they're not so friends and you know the ending it's like are you seriously having a staring contest how old are you <laughs> i, I was, wonder if that oh. too is going to be uh related to captain america choosing to give his sh- the mantle i guess to the falcon right yeah yeah because in the comics winter soldier got it first yes and so I wonder if there'll be some like hard feelings there or whatever. Yeah, within the past ten years in the comics, it was handed down to Falcon, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. But Winter yeah. Soldier first. Yeah, yeah. Winter Soldier was, definitely was first because he uh, Cap had walked away from being Captain America. Steve Rogers walked away and then handed it over to Bucky. No, uh, no, he got killed. He got shot. Oh, was- he thought he was dead. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, yes, that's when he became... A time bullet or some BS like that. Yeah, and then he (laughs) became Nomad. That's what it was. Yeah. And there's a few others. Uh, Well, I I really enjoyed the whole Godzilla vs. Kong, so... (laughs) I'm loving that idea. Uh, What else came out that I'm forgetting? That was interesting. I know the Fast and Furious There were any other Marvel ones, were there? Not that I recall. But... Yeah, I thought it'd be pretty cool to bring up because, uh, you know, there are going to be multiple more of these trailers coming up. I, I saw one that I thought was Marvel, but it wasn't. It was a She-Hulk one. And then Ben corrected me, which is pretty cool. But it looked kind of pretty cool because uh, it has uh, ta- Tatiana like a Ali. trailer for it. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Aslani. Tatiana Aslani oh, was yeah, in it. I can't wait to see I don't that. know if it was a mix match, but whoever did it did it really well. Yeah, I'm look. That's one of the ones. Uh, she Hulk and What If are two that I'm really looking forward to. WandaVision was the other one. Yeah. Now that's we got another. And I don't know if you've talked about it. They did announce. I mean, we don't have a date or anything. I don't think, but they are going to do another like Wakanda kind of like Black Panther Disney yes. Plus things as well. Yeah, there's a Wakanda based Disney Plus show. Yeah. Yeah, that's new news, huh? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yesterday, I didn't even know it was the Super Bowl. Someone's like, happy Super Bowl day. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. And then I just couldn't stop thinking about that one, what we do in the shadows episode where they went to a Super Bowl party hoping to see a superb owl. A superb owl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um, this is where we move on and we're heading towards the end. But, you know, any podcast recommendations that you guys could have? Other than your own, you could do plug your own as well. I mean, my favorite podcast right now is, is I think it's the most popular podcast that there is. It's the daily from the New York times and it's every day, 30 minutes about focused on some topic of national relevance. 
it's a lot of times political, but they talk about other things too. One favorite recently was all about the sense of smell because of COVID taking away people's sense of smell. So talking to different people about that. And this Sunday they had the many lives of Stephen Young. So it was an, all about Stephen Young from Walking Dead, um, Biden's climate plan, what QAnon followers are doing now that their theories have been proven wrong. Dr. Fauci talking about what it was like to work for Trump and just all kinds of different, really, I, I find it all fascinating. So I think it's really well done too. Cool. And it's only 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but it's every day, but yeah. Uh, that's cool. It, it get you 30 minutes of information every day. That's pretty cool though. Pake? Oh man. As far as my podcast listening, if it's not like stuff within Podcastica, uh, and <laughs> Next Level Radio, <laughs> Pirate Core. Yeah, but uh, then I've just got my other kind of things I throw out. I guess just two that I've, I've been enjoying listening to is it's on the Maximum Fun Network. My brother, my brother, and me, the McElroy brothers. It's always just a lot of fun. And they just put out a book about podcasting, which I've bought. I haven't read yet, but I'm really interested to get a lot of insight and stuff through that because they've been doing that podcast for 10 years now. So, what is they, the book? It's called How Everybody Has a Podcast Except for You. And it's literally just them giving a bunch of tips and tricks and like, oh, wow, how to start and build a out. podcast and like yeah. the best. Yeah, it's really cool. So, I, I, I have it. I haven't started reading it yet. And then. I'm a wrestling fan. I love like AEW wrestling stuff. So there's a new podcast called Wrestling with the Week, and it's AEW wrestler Scorpio Sky and Rooster Teeth, uh, Funhouse, uh, James Willems working together, just talking about pop culture and wrestling and sports and everything else. Because they're two totally opposite people who were complete strangers when they started the podcast. And so they're like learning about each other and like talking about their favorite pop culture things with each other. And it's kind of fun. Well, uh, the only one I have to recommend would be My Caffeine Withdrawal by, now it's from Emily Kinney, and we all know her from The Walking Dead. She played Beth, and she does like pretty much a lot of talk with musicians, has her own discussions. Uh, a few times she'll have actors, friends, and they usually talk over uh, a cup of coffee, and I think it's pretty cool. Does and she, she play actually, music on there? Yes, uh, a she'll she'll Ooh, like, like throw music. a few songs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, music's really good. She just started this, I would say, within the past eight months. Originally, she was just doing like stuff on YouTube and through like Facebook and Instagram, and then eventually it just led into being a doing a podcast like everybody else. <laughs> and I think it's pretty fun, <laughs> but it, it's nice to see that she keeps herself occupied, gets her music out and she gets all her friends involved and they do a live like musical performance. And I thought that was pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, uh, we're coming to the end. So well, to submit your feedback, you could always go to our Facebook page. That would be facebook.com slash panels to pixels. And you could just leave a message below for every time we submit something that's gonna we're gonna be covering. Obviously, next week we'll be covering WandaVision season one, episode six, and Snowpiercer season two, episode three. So keep in mind there might be two separate posts. So for whatever you're gonna be commenting on, just look at the image and know it from whichever one it is and just you know, put your comment below and we'll read it. Uh, if you want to send a voicemail like Steve did, all you have to do is just record yourself and just send an email and you could just send that email to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. And that would be panels two is spelt out to you and pixels and the number one at gmail.com. And we'll play that. And you could hear us on Google play, Apple podcasts or Spotify right now. So if there's any sort of, rating that you could do that would be really greatly appreciated and if you want you could always check us out on youtube and we could be found on youtube just by searching for panels to pixels podcast and if you could be so gracious just give us a thumbs up or you know if you really like us just subscribe and that helps us along the way so next week we'll be continuing our coverage with wandavision season one and going into episode six and like i stated Steve will be covering Snowpiercer Season 2, Episode 3. And I believe Daphne will be on with him to cover so. that. And next week, Ben and I will be on. And hopefully, well, maybe we'll have another guest here today. <laughs> Just like we did. <laughs> <laughs> we got three of us here today. So with that, where else can listeners hear you guys? I'm at podcastica.com. I'm on Walking Dead Cast, where we just did the... No, we just did Queen's Gambit, Karen and I. 
the Netflix series. And we're, I think we're going to be doing a catch up for season 10, which will be our second catch up considering season 10 has been going since 2019. Um, <laughs> <laughs> of Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah. Of Walking Dead. And then uh, also House Podcastica, where we wrapped up Cobra Kai, which was awesome. And then we did um, Westworld. David and I just covered the Westworld 1973 movie. And I think we're going to talk about next the um, new Pat Morita bio documentary that just came out more than Miyagi, the Pat Morita story or something like that. I heard it's good. So we might cool. talk about that. Big. All right. Um, you can find me elsewhere. I am on, you know, my podcast with Daphne that you mentioned earlier. We do run for your lives podcast right here. Uh, well on the, uh, pirate core entertainment, which is Mark's other, uh, <laughs> thing but uh yeah anyway so yeah you can catch us on run for your lives uh we talk all kind of things monster movies creature features disaster flicks and so uh the most recent one we've released was crawl 2019's crawl about a movie about alligators and a hurricane it's real great and then who's your guest for that one uh it was just just me and daphne yeah we we only do a a special guest like maybe once a month yeah which if you want to hear jason on there he did recently do the descent with us a couple weeks ago and that was a lot of fun Highly disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> and then this weekend, our episode will be Tremors 2, because our first episode we ever did was Tremors. And so as our 25th episode, it's a kind of cool little milestone. Wow. We figured, yeah, it's all, we've already That's made cool. 25. It's great. Mm-hmm. And so as our the little milestone, we figured we'll start, you know, we'll, we'll go where we started and do Tremors 2. And then we have a really special, like, kind of season, quote unquote, wrap up episode where we'll cover like our favorite movies, monsters, characters over those first 25 and hopefully get some feedback and stuff. You guys can kind of tell us what your favorites were as well. It'd be really cool. Cool. And then I'm also on strange indeed, which is part of the podcastica network that Jason runs. And um, I'm actually recording that (laughs) later today. Um, The day that we're recording this, I've got a double duty today. We're covering the stand episode eight, me, Ben and Rima. And then, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. I don't know exactly what's going on next after that one, the stand wraps, but We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Rima keeps your cards close to the chest sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you listeners could hear me right on Panels the Pixels as normal on the Next Level Podcast Network. Steve as well. And you could also hear Steve on other people's podcasts when he loves to send feedback. <laughs> so everybody here in this room knows that because he sends it out to House Podcastica. He sends it out to Walking Dead Cast as well as run for your lives. So you could always and I'd hear. like to thank him for that. Yeah. <laughs> we can always, always count on Steve having a voicemail on our episodes, and I like that. <laughs> yep. And you could also hear me on my other podcast, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Uh, the last episode that was issued out was Aliens from 1986, where Wendy, uh, Kelly, and I had covered it. Uh, that was I pretty just listened long. to that. That was great. Enjoyed it. So, yeah, we had fun yeah. doing that. The next one that you'll be that will be coming out soon will be True Lies, and Des and I cover that. And uh, that was kind of a short one, so that'll come up. And soon after that will be John Wick Two with Catcraft again. Nice. So uh, look forward to seeing those. You could just find those out on the uh, Pyrocore Entertainment Network. So you can find me there. So pretty much uh, that's a wrap for our show here and i just want to thank jason and peg for coming on and having a good time i thought this was fun yeah it was great i'm glad yeah it's good to get a chance to talk about this awesome show and uh, you no. guys are perfect guys to talk about it with <laughs> <laughs> it's chomping at the bit this week i'm glad i got to do this <laughs> yeah it's always fun and i'm so glad that you guys were able to be on so i just want to thank you guys for coming on and all you listeners for listening And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Peace.